welcome to another edition of Ask Anything presented by Mosher Consulting. I'm your host, Angel Leon, Mosher's Director of Personnel. We're glad you're with us for this episode of Ask Anything. And with us today are a couple of Mosher Consulting's consultants to talk to us about unleashing the power of Power BI for companies. With us today are Sarah Moore and Chris Anderson, part of our data analytics team who are here to dive into the world of Power BI. Sarah is a principal consultant and technology leader at Mosher. She leads the DataViz Technology Interest Group and works as a data visualization engineer in the analytics department. She has a passion for combining creativity with complex data and analysis, stemming from her 10 plus years of experience in a variety of industries and international environments. She also volunteers on the board of the Central Indiana Wilderness Club and loves the outdoors. Chris is a senior consultant, team manager, and delivery manager here at Mosher. He is currently working as a BI engineer, developing full-stack solutions from data ingestion to report creation. He has worked with Power BI for over seven years, both as a developer as well as personally utilizing reports he built for operations management and strategic planning in manufacturing. He has a passion for data modeling and helping clients make the most of their data with robust, flexible reporting solutions. Fun fact about Chris, and this is very fun. In the past, he has also worked as a Japanese interpreter after having spent four years living in Japan. That is a great fun fact. I want to learn more about it here in a second when I welcome my guests, Sarah Moore and Chris Anderson. And Sarah is a repeat offender here at Ask Anything. This is her second time. So Sarah, welcome back. Chris, thank you for joining us for the first time. Let's talk Power BI. But first, Japan. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? Four (laughs) years living in Japan. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, my uh, background is not originally in data. It's in uh, Japanese, originally majored in Japanese at IU, uh, and spent four years in Japan as an English teacher out of college before I came back, started working as an interpreter at a manufacturing company, and then kind of slowly over time got more involved in the data side of things, specifically Power BI. That is Super amazing. I mean, so there you go. We always talk about how people in IT don't necessarily always start in IT. So that is a great way to start. And Sarah, how are you? Welcome back. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I also find that very interesting. We've had people who were teachers before. We've had people... (laughs) many walks of life that have come into IT. And it's interesting when you can blend both of those things and, you know, you kind of bring up a great thing that you did in the past and now you're blending it with IT. It's mm-hmm. it's wonderful. So let's talk Power BI, guys. Can you summarize what Power BI is and how it works? So Power BI is basically Microsoft's analytics service. It's a tool uh, that they have set up so that you can easily take data from several different sources and combine it in a way that makes it very easy to visualize and create reports that are both very dynamic and interactive as well. The way that I would kind of describe it to somebody who's maybe you know, more of a, a business user from an Excel background, be if you think about when you're trying to make a report and using functions like VLOOKUP or something, like pulling columns from one table over to another one, Power BI kind of lets you predefine that sort of logic so that you can then, you know, just by dragging columns onto a page, very quickly create interactive dashboards that provide a lot more insights than you would be able to uh, have with other tools. I have a question. Yeah. Does BI stand for something? Yes, a very good question. So yeah, BI is short for business intelligence. There we go. Okay. There you go. (laughs) I was not coming up with it. (laughs) And before I let Sarah go, I, I do have to say, you mentioned the E word, Excel. A lot yes. of people very <laughs> particular about their Excel. And then when you mentioned Power BI, it's like, oh, no, no, don't take my Excel away. But Sarah, go ahead. No. <laughs> I think that's a great like analogy, too. It's a way to visualize data. And there are limitations to what you can do in Excel that Power BI can bring to life, especially when it comes to like sharing and collaboration and everyone's looking at the same report. So that's something that it'll, it's a tool that allows you to control permissions and access and things like that. But just in general, when it comes to like data points, data story, data visualization, it's something that enables you to do all of that. If you're doing it well, I think you'll have a really good data story that comes to life for the end users. Yeah, and Sarah touched on a good point there with the sharing. I think that's the other part of Power BI that makes it really unique compared to a tool like Excel, because you can basically, once you make your report, you can publish those to a central location that's accessible through your web browser. And then 
anybody who you want to be able to see that in your organization can always go to that same place and see up-to-date information without everybody having to share files or uh, make copies and things like that, which can, of course, cause issues. So I think you started mentioning some of these, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. What are some of the key benefits that any company can gain from using Power BI? I mean, you mentioned putting it in a centralized place. I know it's huge on dashboards and just the way it looks for people. So I'll let you two describe that. I would say the biggest thing that I've seen and what kind of lets companies get value really immediately from it is using it as a tool to automate reporting. So I, I know there's a lot of companies that I've worked with where department managers are spending you know hours every month manually transforming data, copying it from one place to another, going back to Excel, dragging your formulas down or renaming your columns so that everything looks right. Power BI, <laughs> what that does is you can kind of define all of that logic for what you're doing, oftentimes just connect it back to the source. And so you can eliminate a lot of that manual time that you're spent creating the reports, which, you know, of course, that can have a lot of benefit just from time savings. I've seen some situations where like that's an entire person's job, just kind of doing that manual reporting. And so when you can take that time away and get them uh, working on something more useful or particularly uh, for managers, I think when they can spend less time having to put their reports together and more time actually looking at them, deciding strategically how they're going to fix the problems that those reports are providing insights for. So I think where kind of immediately companies can get a lot of benefit from Power BI. I think a building on that too is you can unify the message that you're sending out to different audiences. We've talked on Excel, which is a great tool, but if you give like 10 different people an Excel workbook, they could come up with multiple reports using a lot of different key uh, performance indicators and aggregate data differently. So this is a tool that enables you to apply business logic and kind of as Chris was saying, like unifying to the source so that you can have a little bit more control over, you know, what you're applying different business rules or, you know, calculations so that, you know, that at the end of the day, your end users, the audiences are looking at the same data in the same way. So you can be confident in that if you validated it right. And another thing we kind of talked about is people coming from different backgrounds. Not everyone has a background in technology or data. And so I think Power BI and, and tools like that also enable people of different, what you could call data literacy types to have access to data in, in an understandable, usable way. So they can make decisions without having to know how to create a pivot table in Excel. They don't have to take the data and figure it out on their own. It's presented to them in a usable way. I like how you said unify the message, because I think you gave a great example in that if you give a group of people the same spreadsheet in Excel, they could come up with various models and various strengths of data really from that versus if you use a tool like Power BI, you can now work more, I don't know if collaboratively is, is the right way of putting it. And, and so everybody can share and just funnel everything through. I, I don't know if that's, if I'm making any sense, but I just like the way you said unify the message with this tool. Yeah, another term that you hear a lot kind of along those lines is uh, data silos, which is where okay. say each different department, they're all kind of transforming the data slightly differently. Like Sarah was describing, you know, maybe one department calculates a metric this way and another department calculates it another way. And a problem a lot of companies face is when you end up in uh, these situations where all the data is kind of like cordoned off from each other. So that when you want to do cross analysis between departments, for example, becomes very difficult to do because they're not using the same naming conventions and things like that. Whereas mm -hmm. with Power BI and its ability to build relationships between tables and data, especially, you know, interdepartmental data, it lets you perform that cross analysis a lot easier without having to kind of spend a whole lot of time massaging and transforming your data. Very interesting. So are there any common misconceptions about Power BI that you both would like to debunk? 
Yeah, for me, um, I think a lot of people have at least heard of DAX, which is the kind of function language that's used in Power BI, it's short for data analysis expressions. I think even among programmers, there's a lot of people who think that DAX is very unintuitive and difficult to use and that unless you're a master in DAX that you can't use Power BI. I think that's a huge misconception because A, um, there's a lot of features in Power BI where even if you don't write any DAX at all, you can still make really functional interactive dashboards just by dragging a column from a table over to your visual. And then the other side of it for kind of more of the development crowd is if you have your data model designed well and everything is kind of in a good structure, then a lot of times you can perform fairly advanced calculations with pretty simple DAX. So again, there's certainly a learning curve if you get really in-depth into it, but there's a ton that you can do with just very basic knowledge there. This might not be specific to Power BI, but when you use a, a visualizing tool like Power BI and, and you think of the data process, I think one misconception is that it's like a linear process. So mm. you prepare your data, you publish it, and you're done. But keeping like the end user in mind is really necessary because you could create a report that isn't actually useful to anybody and it just sits out there. Or maybe you, your data becomes stale or you need to update something. So I think always going back throughout the process and validating data and then working with all the stakeholders involved. You know, it could be one person that's doing all of it, but if there's multiple people making sure there's communication, so there's understanding and how the data is modeled and being transformed so that you can present it accurately in the different visualizations. Yeah, it's always important. And I think that's something that we do here at Mosher is that we're always keeping in touch with the client, making sure that we are on top of what exactly is that they need and what they want for the product to look like in the end. And I know that in the previous episode you were with us, Sarah, you talked a lot about the user experience, how that human set of design, et cetera, how that all represents itself. And I'm sure with Power BI, we're talking almost the same language. Exactly. It's very much involved. And even if you don't know what these terms are, it, it just makes sense that you would want the report, the per person consuming the report to look at it and sign off on it to make sure that it's something that they can use. Or you may be answering the wrong questions. They're not asking those questions or you're trying to save them time by adding in this action step that they're no longer doing, if that makes sense such as like they have a question, they're going to export it to Excel to do this. Maybe that's no longer a function. So we no longer need to put that table in the report. So to end, for companies that maybe are just starting out with Power BI, what advice would you give them to get the most out of the platform? For me, I touched on this a little bit before, but I would say really spend a little bit more time at the beginning uh, developing your data model. Do a little bit of research. There's some Pretty easy to understand documentation from Microsoft on star schemas and dimensional models. I think that the more time that you put in at the beginning for just making sure that your data is clean and structured well, it's going to save you a lot of headaches down the line. Kind of along those lines, I'd say don't jump straight to, for example, if you are used to working in Excel with very large like flat tables where maybe you started off at five or six tables and again you're doing all of those V lookups to drag 17 other columns onto your table. Just because that's what you're used to, that's not really the best approach in Power BI. A lot mm -hmm. of the times it's going to be much easier if you just kind of pull in those base tables as they are and define those relationships because it'll just leave you with a solution that's much more flexible uh, in the long term and easier to work with. That's a mistake I see a lot of kind of newer companies making when they're just trying to do exactly what they did in Excel and pull it over to Power BI, but it kind of limits a lot of the uh, interactiveness that you can get from the, the reports in Power BI. So that would be the big one that I would bring up. I think a few things are if you've never created a report or a dashboard, you know, a combination of visuals on one page within Power BI, there's a few places you could start. You don't have to already have in mind what you need. You can explore the data by testing out different visual options, looking at different aggregations. But with that, when you start to build out your report, you don't have to put everything on one page either. I think if you utilize different types or levels of detail throughout the dashboard, you could have the, the last report be a drill through to a detail table, but the first report could be a summary of all of those data points in one. 
And finally, I think also with what Chris was saying is you're building out your data model and as you're exploring your data to continue to test out with slicers, because you may set up everything and it's one big aggregation, but if you haven't looked at slicing or filtering your data by different levels, like by department or how it rolls up, your numbers might look a little bit differently than you wanted them to. So I think maybe what I'm trying to say is validation is also important. Mm -hmm. um, those are some advice I would hand out. Yeah, kind of, kind of bouncing off what you were talking about with like the visuals on the page as well. One thing I would really emphasize for companies to try out is just something like having maybe three or four different uh, visuals on the page and setting them up in a way where you can easily kind of interact. Kind of classic example that I bring up a lot of the times from a, a previous job I worked at was in manufacturing, the production department was very focused on trying to reduce scrap, like throwing away parts and process. And so just having a simple column chart where it's showing here's our trends by area over time, another chart that's showing here's our scrap by part, and another chart that's showing here's our scrap by reason. Then all of a sudden you can look at it and say, hey, on this day, we had a spike in scrap in this area. You can click on that area. It's going to show you which parts were thrown away on that day in that area. You can then click on which part was the highest, see what reasons it was thrown away for. Click on that reason, see if that was a one-time thing that we were having a, a spike for that reason, or if it's something that's been kind of, you know, continuing to happen over time or it's been growing. So again, this is all stuff where, you know, you don't have to be a super experienced data analyst to do that sort of analysis. It's just something doing a couple of clicks on the screen and all of a sudden you have this massive amount of insight that you can act on, which I think is something that's really unique to uh, BI tools like Power BI that is much more difficult to do in something like Excel. Very interesting. And I don't necessarily know fully what I'm talking about, but I'm going to ask anyway, because you mentioned having four or five designs on the page. What is the standard, let's just say, of when you're presenting something like this, what, what are you supposed to commonly see or what can people see when they're trying this out for the first time? I'm sure Sarah probably has like the, the more scientific answer for this, I think, from the, the human center <laughs> design perspective. For me, I typically find like Three or four is just about the max for what you want to aim for in terms of graphs on the page. If it's a report you're like just making for yourself to do a lot of in-depth analysis, I think, again, sometimes you can get away with more if like you're the one that's going to be using it. But I think Sarah touched on this before with knowing your audience. A mistake I've seen developers make before is they have this like super complex dashboard with like 20 different visuals on it. And it's easy for them because they know exactly where everything is because they made it, right? Mm -hmm. And then they show it to somebody else and they just have, say, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Give me my Excel table back. So <laughs> again, like you, like Sarah was talking about, like having a data story, understanding the purpose for like why you're making that dashboard, what sort of insights somebody would be able to get out of that and trying to make it as intuitive as possible. So with very little explanation, somebody who knows that data should be able to just jump in and know how they can kind of play with it. I think you answered that perfectly, but yeah. I think, especially the point on data story and understanding the end user, I think too, it's it's okay to start out simple and what some people may say basic, just bar chart. There could be a bit of change management and you may have to introduce slowly over time, different visuals that people can get used to, especially if they're used to just looking at a table in Excel. So yeah, I, I think starting out with four or maybe a couple visuals that summarize the data in a certain way with a table underneath just to help people start to get mm -hmm. used to what it means to interact and look at a report that can drive insights like that. So there is a little bit of change management involved probably in, in teaching users how to utilize it in order to get the most benefit out of something like Power BI. I think that's a key element, teaching people how to use it. Because I've been on the end of what you were describing, Chris, of having too many displays in one yeah. screen and I'm just going, okay, if I touch this, then I get something yeah. opens up or it highlights. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I've been like, oh my God, I'm not a huge Excel user. I use it of course, because it's a tool that we have and I like dashboards. I do. It's just that when I get a dashboard with one too many pie charts or graphs mm -hmm. or et cetera, I kind of get a little bit claustrophobic. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. You know, in front of me. And then when you start clicking, you don't know where you're going to and from. And so I have seen some of the great dashboards that 
some of you guys and some of your or your teams have created here for for our internal use, and it's great. And that's exactly how I prefer it. Just simple click here. Okay, it takes me to the next page, and then I know my way back. Versus some others that I've used externally that I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> where's the home button? Where, how can I go back home? Right. So with that, we'd like to thank. Chris and Sarah for joining us to talk about Power BI today. Guys, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed this too. Thank you for listening in to this week's edition of Ask Anything presented by Motion Consulting. We hope you enjoyed listening to Sarah Moore and Chris Anderson talk to us about Power BI. Join us next time when we continue to dive deeper with our resident experts and what they're currently working on. Remember to send us your ideas or topics via our social media feeds. In the meantime, please remember to give us a rating and subscribe to our feed wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, unify the message. Go to Power BI. So long, everybody.